Uh, Bex has already done a podcast today. This is going to be the second one. It's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a bit slower in pace. <laughs> We're going to take a little bit of time to grapple with the concepts, probably, uh, because of certain uh, variables. Variables have happened. Yeah, exactly. Um, so just before the podcast started, we were discussing uh, what it's like in a taxi when you get asked about your job, when they inevitably say, what do you do for work? Yeah, and they're just, well, that's what we were just saying now. You said, uh, they were like, what's the one tip yeah, that yeah, you yeah. can give me? Yeah. And, and you're uh, like, no. Yeah, the, and the, the conversation always starts with a sigh, and then <sighs> so many people don't understand, you know, that it's more than just one line, one gimmick, one trick or anything like that. It's about everything sort of cohesively coming into place and um, and sort of re-sculpting your personality and developing you as a person. It's never about that one thing you do, it's about who you are and who you become. Exactly. Um, it's like Trivial Pursuit. Yeah. You get collecting all the uh, chunks of yeah, looks yeah, yeah. like cheese. Yeah. But yeah, that, that that's totally, I had to work on so many different aspects when I, learned game originally on the same week I started learning NLP yeah and I was like wow these are two new concepts I, was I that couldn't even imagine same, was that from the same person both of those uh, no, no two different sources yeah. there's a lot of literature on NLP now isn't there in, in sort of public in libraries and in um, on Amazon there's a lot of NLP books that sell um, do you think that's something that's changed a lot from when you started out in game to now yeah NLP was like this new secret technology yeah. Like game was back then as well, really. Yeah. It's like I was given two golden eggs. Yeah. And I was like, that's what I always say to people. These are some golden eggs you should always have in your life. Yeah. Learn game, learn NLP, and learn uh, body language. Yeah. Which is part of game as well, but mm-hmm. just like body language. And even sales, learn sales. Yeah. Just because you learn and, to talk And to there's people. so many books like that now, isn't there? Yeah. In terms of body language, there's that one called What Everybody Is Saying, um, which is by an ex. Um, CIA author who brought people in um, to interview them about crimes that he thought they'd commit and he was the person that sat there and decoded what their bodies were saying so if they said no I never murdered that person I wasn't with them he can read from their body language where they're lying it's an absolutely amazing book and then it's, NLP is just extensive well the good way of telling is eye accessing cues yeah so you know if you're thinking of something you're looking in a direction yeah you know, left and up yeah and if you're um making something up yeah you look the other way and so on so yeah because the different parts of you look that's the different parts where you access those tools but it can change if they're left-handed like, yeah like me is it yeah the sides change well it can mix around and stuff but yeah. also if you know what you're doing you can just look the other way yeah i think um one of the book's main points is as well was that there's no like uh, necessarily a cue that's the same for everybody. You want to find out what individuals' cues are. Yeah. So if one person constantly slaps their leg, then you know that that's a cue for them feeling this way. So, you, it's, so a lot of it is about focusing on the individual and learning their specific cues, um, which very much applies in the context of women on a date particularly. When they're doing something, you have to be able to decode that and say, okay, she's feeling uncomfortable now, she's feeling turned on now she's feeling a bit more excited and you can read their bodies because you've you've done it over a period of time um, pupil dilation yeah is a good one exactly well. yeah that i mean i guess that must have been like that book the secret now where people are like is it real or is it not is it magic or is it just real yeah it was so new you, you'd only know by learning it and yeah going, oh yeah it works yeah and that's how i did it i was like ah yeah yeah it does work yeah, and there was just a, probably a few people, you and a few others, who were the only ones that had access to that material. So Yeah. At the time, I was a sponge. Well, I still am, really. But just trying to get everything I could do to better myself. Yeah. You know, working out, eating right, learning NLP, mm-hmm. um, doing some sales. Yeah. And obviously gaming. Yeah. was like a double job. <laughs> yeah. And you have to balance and all two that jobs. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> double jobbing not so rare now a <laughs> double job in <laughs> yeah multiple income sources the entrepreneurs call it <laughs> but yeah i think it's, it's very much defined your lifestyle in that way as well because if you're having to dedicate that much time to being out in the street you, you know you can't afford to always be in the office especially at the start you have to get your name out there your reputation out there and you have to be um putting in the work so um i think you know the entrepreneurs like yourself that got into it early 
you've really had to work hard at managing different um, sort of streams of income and different streams of work. Yeah, because I was more focused in gaming than I was at working. Yeah. Well, it I, should, should have been the other way around. Really. Yeah, I mean, it should, but a lot of that comes with time, doesn't it? That you find a bit more of a balance between, yeah. right, well, I, I need to hustle. I've got real things to, to build and create. I can't be doing this all the time. Yeah, the, and the thing is, uh, I work so I have enough money so then I can go out and practice new and build new things so then I can go yeah. and show someone. Yeah. So it's like, uh, if I work, my game goes, or yeah. it doesn't go, but stay stagnant it's, yeah it's on a stasis but if I continue and especially at the the level I am now it really you can find some amazing things yeah it's, it's very true it's literally like controlling time yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly well basically um, about you know a cabbie might say to you yeah give me that one piece of advice and yeah there, and there isn't There's, it, it's definitely not a magic pill yeah but it's a magic um a magic treatment so yeah. you'd have to take it over time meaning you have to do it yeah over it's an time. ongoing thing it's isn't it it's a quick yeah. hit and wow the, I have mm. the power you know you will see a noticeable difference and some people are incredible difference yeah. by doing a boot camp yeah but some people might only see a slight difference everyone will improve yeah that's a fact as long as they're not being totally negative and just Absolutely. not doing anything because yeah. then no one can help them yeah but um some people, yeah, just take... It's how long is a piece of string? People go to me, how long is it going to take me to get good at this? Yeah. How long is a piece of string? It, it, That's up to depends. you, really, yeah. and what you're going to put into it. And and I also think it's it comes down to like being able to know the student as well because some students are going to learn through demonstrations. They're yeah. going to learn through being around you and seeing the way you act and, and literally moulding themselves around your body language. Um, and I think in guys especially, when they see that they can sort of remould the way they present themselves to the world, they get very excited about that. And a lot of guys learn just from being in the environment of a boot camp. Osmosis. Or, or, uh, yeah, it's just being in that. But other people are much more rigid. They're much more information-based. They need to see things written down on paper. They need to uh, compartmentalize it, they need the details. label it. And this is where we've got these sort of two different um, archetypes of, of students, um, the ones that learn through being and the ones that learn through sort of seeing and reading. Um, I think it's really interesting when you have both of those people in the same environment and you're thinking, how does this person, you know, learn this thing and this person learn this thing and this? Um, and it can become really exciting, I think. because. And I think you can actually, um, I find that I'm better with wingmen that are either, see, I'm, I'm quite, you know, up in the air, mm. high energy-ish, um, you know, move around a lot, Kino a lot, yeah, spin them very around, fluid. yeah, play, playful, body language, cheeky chappy, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm I'm good better if someone's a bit more rigid and not so jumping, you know, not not so mobile as yeah. me, because then it's two guys jumping around. Uh huh. You mm. see, but also I can. But why I like to teach people is their their opposite way of being, so that they really learn and it opens up that side of their brain. Yeah, you know, so if they are someone that's very rigid and it's like details and very meek, you know, yeah. get them to be as loud as they can yeah. and spin people around mo mobile as possible. Yeah, it makes quite a good dynamic mm. actually between a two wingman that I guess well just two guys that go out together when um, one of them is in that sort of um, energizer role and the other one is in that sort of um, uh, keeping that balance. Yeah, keeping it balance. That's it. Keep the balance, yeah. and that's what I find. Like you, uh, you know, some women are more touchy feely, like um, caring, sharing yeah. type, motherly. So I do that. So I mention, you know, my family. Yeah, and I keno a lot, and you know, please and thank you, and very polite. Some some girls that maybe like me, they you know, they're the ones that might jump on the table and run around and so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You'd be like, right, come on, next party, my yeah. house, bang, and you know, straight out or yeah. spin them around or jump on a table or something like that. Yeah, you know, if it's day game, put them, you know, rush them across the road so they get that yeah. adrenaline rush. Uh, if they're reds, they're normally like the cop box, you know, they're very angry. Yeah. Bolsy women, you have to fight fire with fire on that, but also compliment them. Yeah, so just they, win them over. They're very easy to win over, aren't they? Yeah. Actually, those are friends that are very aggressive at first, it's almost like a call for love. It's like a cry for love. Mm. They're looking at you and they're thinking, "Oh, this is just another guy that's just never going to go for me, never going to talk to me." And then you charm them, and it's very easy to do so because 
they're looking for love they're desperate for your love in that yeah. sense the girls that don't get approached the ones that cop looking at you they want the attention that's it they're jealous of the ones yeah, that are getting the they attention because they, they want are. it um, they so try they, to ruin it but, but it's encouraging I think for guys that are learning this now to know that they're the easiest ones to please because as soon as you start charming them a little bit the cock block goes away and she becomes your wing woman yeah. or he becomes your wing woman you know the amount of times um, I and certainly you have, have got a guy from a girls group to wingman you yeah, and yeah. help you get that girl like it's it's an art isn't it to be able to seduce the, the cock block yeah and really own the group mm. I mean a good way is if you go into a group bring a girl with you yeah. merge it in yeah. You know, look at the guy. Always address the guy as you're doing your opener. Mm. So look at him, and then as you're saying it, bang, you can look around the rest of the group and start smiling because you you gave him that respect now. Yeah. If not, he's going to be an ass. The girls will pick up on it, and they'll move on. Exactly. So for some of the guys that are maybe a bit more new to it or trying to learn, um, let's, let's try and explain the reason why bringing a girl into a set of either women or a mixed set why does bringing a girl into that set make everyone like you in that in that group like you more? Well, one, you're not like the weirdo that doesn't have a girl with him. Mm-hmm. And girls do think that to a degree, certain degrees, different girls, obviously. Uh, two, it's your social proof. Yeah. Because you're going in with a girl. Three, you're, it's like the guy will be happy you brought another girl in and yep. he won't be so defensive. He's like, well, he's got a girl with him already. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe that's his girlfriend or yep. whatnot. Or maybe that could be my girlfriend if these are all my yep. friends. Yeah, and so. you can... Yeah, so throw, throw her onto him and like you know there you go yeah. not not physically obviously but like hey have you two met bum, mm-hmm. bum, and then you and now he's occupied you can talk and he to might the rest be a cool guy yeah and he might be a cool guy and she might yeah. genuinely like him yeah. so you you're doing everyone a favor in that case and he might be friend zoning by friend zoned by his group yep he could anyway he could so be. he's happy just to get a girl yeah exactly um, so I think really what it comes down to and it's another thing that we were discussing earlier is how um, valuable it is to have women around you in the first place. You yeah, know, I think it's like, really important to have female friends as yeah, well. Yeah, because um, Mystery certainly, and I'm, I'm sure you helped him, you know, Mystery, well, uh, carried the idea forward, but created the, the, you know, the five attractive qualities of men. So leader of men, protector of loved ones, stable emotions and mm. a willingness to d- express them, um, pre-selection by women and successful risk taker. But it's the fourth one that really stands out, which is pre-selection by women. Because if you have this one, all the others come for free. Because the girls see that for you to be with that woman, women must find you attractive. Yeah. And then, therefore, they're going to find you attractive because you, they've got proof that you're attractive. Exactly. So and, and also... It short circuits the rest of them. So, you know, when you get a little bit further, when you start to learn a bit, that one can short circuit all the rest of them. Yeah, totally. Mm. Well, the one thing that uh, Mystery says is a girl might not know she's attracted to you until she feels jealousy, mm-hmm. that pang of yeah. jealousy. Yeah. And um, that's why it's important because, as I said in the first podcast, jealousy is the strongest emotion. Yeah. So uh, bring that emotion in, that is like a yeah. atomic bomb mm-hmm. going off in the group and everyone's disrupted. While they're disrupted, you know, you can do your game. Yeah. And why do you think... Um people put so much uh why do why do women focus so much on that uh when that point where they get jealous like why what, what is their obsession with it well it's it's, it's sort of if you're going you know primeval mm-hmm. is it primeval is that right going back to the early days of the homo sapiens yeah we'll go with that mind. please put your comments below <laughs> <laughs> please tell us <laughs> please tell us yeah. <laughs> we only know game <laughs> uh, <laughs> So you it basically be like the main man that they need to breed with, like yeah. the stud of a horse. Yeah. So you go in with a, and the hot of the girl, they're like, well, she's done all the ticks. She's checked out him. He must be awesome because yeah. she's with him. Correct. So now jealousy hits and they will fight for you. Yeah. And that's how that works. Yeah. And yeah, so that, that social proof is what proves the leader of men, protector of loved ones. Um, and the successful risk taker and the healthy emotions it proves that you have all of that yeah. um, so that's the focus that's the that's the focus point is if you can get to the stage where you have a woman around you or a few women around you even in your friendship circle that you regularly go to places with other women are going to find you attractive yeah you will notice indicators of interest I, I definitely 
go out with more women than I do men unless I'm training. Yeah. Like, that's just... I it, have to do that. I mean, it, yeah. And and, just and that's because, the thing. I put it in my mind, I have to do that. It's not, I'm going to do it or I should do yeah, it or and try I, and do it. It's very true. And because we work with a lot of men in the industry, it's, it's us coaching guys and collaborating mostly with guys. Yeah. It's... There's, there is a sort of need at the end of the day for you to want the company of a woman because you haven't been in, you know, often you, you know, you're working one on one with with men, so you really appreciate that. Yeah, exactly. And the good thing is hanging out with women, it turns on that, you know, a bit of that feminine side of the brain yeah, it does. and gets you in that talkative state yeah. because they're going to be talking. That's a fact, right? Yeah, they're going to be talking. And you're going to be so, having them yeah. talking to you, so it's almost yeah. like you're. It's in, not going to be a man's conversation, yeah. right? It's just very, you know straightforward and, and basic, in, yeah and in, and in instruction a lot of the time instruction based that makes sense yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> are you joking <laughs> what what have you been up to lately oh man there's been a lot of projects you've been doing coasting nights and stuff yeah i've i've been uh just sort of expanding what i need to do in order to sort of get to where i want to be in folk and really start hitting my goals and a lot of it's been event planning, so um, day parties, you know, roof terrace parties with hot tubs and things. And it's been sort of trying to, trying to sort of build this network through this and, and learn how events work for when I want to be putting them on and things. And that's gonna um, get you a lot of female friends? It does, yeah, because there's a lot of, um, there's still more women working in sort of those hospitality roles, you know. So you do spend a lot of time talking to women and collaborating with them. And then it's been the coaching on the side and then I'm, I'm writing um, a sort of day game booklet at the mm, moment, which good. I want to release in a couple of months. So it's just been a lot of little side projects like we were talking about before. There's been no uh, real sort of office or one single place that um, you, you know, sort of living and money's coming from. It's been a lot of different areas. I find that from doing this for so long, that it, I feel, in a way, a bit of a nomad. Yeah. A naughty nomad. Yeah. So, you know, you, you go from city to city, training people, mm -hmm. and you just get used to being on the road. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you'll come back for a little bit, a month or two. Yeah. But and life is wherever but, you are at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And you learn to wield that. So you can go in a city, you know what you've got to do, you know how to sure. take it over, you know how to get in good good clubs yeah just get sort of the best right you people. can out of the city yeah like meet the right people and and do the right things it's a really yeah it's a really good way to do that is to be constantly on the road um i think the other thing it does is it sometimes it takes you a while to settle into a new environment mm. like if you move country or move house so if you speed up that process again of being comfortable in any environment yeah. whether you're in thailand in you know israel working or in london it gives you that sort of um natural adaptability where you can just be with wherever you are yeah when i land i'm, I'm great i know you know I, yeah. know I know my objectives yeah and you've probably net networked forward a little bit so and you, it, you know a guy will put you up in a nice place and that guy will provide you you know places to go and the right people to get you into those clubs and if you if you do have those networks from previous travels then it's very easy for you to find a way around it's called pipelining is it yeah What's it? pipeline before you get there cool so whatever that may be you know set your dating apps and put them out there yeah. or I always tell the guys do that before you get there so you, you know you know some people what, what's so for you for someone that travels a lot teaching this and, and doing events in different countries um, what do you like what's your sort of focus when you get into a new what's your like to-do list what's your focus before you're going to a new country uh, so I'll, I'll google where to go I'll yeah. google the best clubs see, check out the pictures as well that's more important yeah than just words and uh, I might <coughs> send them an email but I'm really good at blagging in clubs I'm just I, yeah I've got I've got my key there's words. a sort of an art to that as yeah. well isn't there yeah I really really saw that you know, in, in Cannes this year like that you can really go wherever you want to go if yeah. you have the right conviction. Yeah. And you, you'll know this from, from the, all the experiences you've had with it. But when, when you go to somebody on the door and you realize that that's just another person on the other end, and if you say something like this to that person, if you say something like, you, these guys are with so-and-so company, you need to get them in, the, 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 your manager's gonna be furious if these people don't come through. Very often, even if that person doesn't believe you on the door, um, they don't want to risk it. 
Yeah. Because if you are if you are who you say you are, then they're fucked. And if they let you in, yeah, they might get a telling off, but it's not going to be Fired. as big a problem. Yeah. So if you have the conviction to go up to somebody on the door and make them feel like they'll, it's worse for them not to let you in, then you can get in basically anywhere that you want. I was with I was staying with Matador in LA, and um, we their top club there. Mm-hmm. So we went there, and he's like, "We're not going to get in. We're not going to get in." I was yeah. like, "Just let me talk for him." So I talked for ten minutes, and then he's like walking away again, and I kept walking and walking, and I'd said various things that I, yeah. I usually works, and he was just tough. He was a tough cookie, yeah. and he was English in America, so it didn't really <laughs> it didn't it help with the whole, ing- the whole the whole English charm. Yeah, that it didn't get away it with. Took it away. And then, um, so I shared, so where, where can I, uh, review a place or something I said, da, 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 mm-hmm. meaning I'm going to go to your competitors, mm-hmm. you know, really party. So where is the next best place basically? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, oh. come in like that. And then we got in and, and then he said to go two free drinks for them, you know, each. So we had like two tokeny things. Yeah. And so not only that, we got drinks, got him free. Oh, not not nice. even to pay to get in. Yeah. You know, got him free. We just want, we were willing to pay to get in. And so we went back the next night and I was at a party, this was a mad night. Twenty two Swedish girls, about five Swedish men as well, mm-hmm. on the rooftop partying around and uh Tyler Durden lived around the corner and I was texting him, gotta to come to this party, you gotta to come to this party. It was brilliant. And uh he took he took ages coming, I think it was yeah. editing or something. And then um and he, he said, oh, I passed, I passed all the blondes on the street because the party had ended and gone on the yeah. street. And not half of us had gone to uh, near the club and the girls got in and so on. And I was waiting outside and uh, he came up, but he had a few people with him. I think one was maybe a cameraman or something. I don't know. And uh, Matador was there. So it, was, it ends up being like four dudes. Mm-hmm. No, five. He had another guy with him as well. I think he was a student. And um, I just let, uh, the guy was there on the door again. I went, Hey, Michael. He looks over. It's Rob. And he went, Oh, yeah, yeah, all right, Rob. That's good. Mm. And I swear, there was a queue of like nines and tens, and you'll hear why in a minute. Nines and tens going around the corner. <sighs> and it was just so absurd. Like, yeah. no one thought they were getting in. But I just had that conviction. Mm-hmm. Anyway, straight through the queue, bang, in. And he went, Go up to the VIP bit. Just to, and they nodded to the VIP person. They let us up. Mm. And we looked down. And it's Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, he man. just filmed the Revmoon film, I think. He was filming it he had a big beard. Yeah. And he owns half of that club that mm. we were at. And we looked down and see a women around him. Yeah. And um, I'm, so I'm gaming loads of amazingly hot women there, closing them and saying, oh, should we go back to the mansion? Because I was staying at Tyler's. Should we go back to the mansion? And, uh, you know, they were all so up for it, but they were like, but we're going to Leo's. But another time, can we come out, you know, or oh, do you want to go for a drink another time? <laughs> and it turned out that my biggest cop block in the whole of LA was Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a pretty cool thing to say, though. That's a pretty cool <laughs> thing to have. Is, yeah. And so the Swedish girls went anyway, as well. Yeah. And parted. And uh, I went off to Orange County with doing a student one-on-one. Okay. And it's, I think it was like, now 45 minutes away or something yeah. like that we were partying in Orange County and one of the girls rings me and said I've, I've talked you into coming I've talked you into coming to Leonardo is that your Swedish yeah it's my really bad one it's like the chef <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I, think, I think the whole of Sweden's going to be really really upset at that accent <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> sorry my friends in Sweden <laughs> yeah I got the text do you want to come and it was just too far away yeah and they're like you've got to come quick as well Mm. And yeah, so I got invited to it as well. But yeah, well, I think it was like a night or two later or something. Yeah. But I was just like, ah, what? I never leave the city. I never leave LA. It goes. He's just like, you should party in Orange County. You yeah. should try it. Wow. So. so that's um, that's all from the skill. That's all from the skill. That, of see, there you go. That's all from. It's all from uh, talking to lots of people and mm-hmm. being comfortable in yourself doing it. And and knowing what it's like to be them as well, f- feeling what their position is like and the pressures that are on them, and and what they really want to do, je- they want to let you in. You know, they don't want to be stood there saying no. Yeah, so, they want you to convince them, or well, they just want to be nice because yeah. they have to d- turn people down like so much that you know, especially in Cannes, so much of the time the door people are like, oh my god, just stop. Okay, just go through. Look, I'm just I don't care anymore. Yeah, they were just fed up of um of the whole thing, so it was. 
you know that you, you see that their morals they want to let you in in a way they don't want to be here rejecting people it's just when you can sort of trigger that in them when you can just go up and be like put put enough of a um conviction there that they want to yeah they want to get that good feeling of letting someone through um but it's yeah it's it's different in clubs like that because when it's just women on the door like they they just let they just let them in the women yeah. know you know that are there know that they're hot they're sort of hot enough to be there and they have conviction yeah yeah they do and Leo would probably just had a checklist of like yeah. yes 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 totally. no yeah well think without conviction you've got nothing yeah so it's obvious that if you're going to work on something yeah. work on conviction how how what would be the first step to to sort of um having more conviction in in everything you do what would be the first thing if you were a guy and you wanted to i think it's a combo of things so okay. you know when i talk about my five c's to being a natural yeah so it's confidence congruency calibration conviction and courage mm -hmm. but the king of all them is conviction because if you have enough conviction if it's bigger than someone else's you win yeah if it's stronger because you convince them mm -hmm. um so it's if you want to build up to that you need to build up the other seas so you need to get some courage yeah. to go and start doing these things cool you know and taking a few risks yeah so yeah. that's really getting over approach anxiety for so many people isn't yeah it? they get they get completely blocked by the feeling of a pro of, of being anxious before you talk to yeah, someone yeah totally so they've lost before they started so when we we have a lot both of us have a lot of students that come to us and really their only major major issue there's a lot for everybody to learn but their only major problem is the fact that they're too scared to do it yeah because they haven't seen evidence that it's going to work yet but it's it's true that once they see a start of po uh, a couple of positive references and a couple of um girls start to really like them now they have evidence that they can do it and that's where the motivation really really I think ratchets up in a way because before that point there's there's they still don't know if this is pseudoscience or if it's real life you know there's that like, yeah. point they reach yeah. if it's your first day on the Bexter lifestyle boot camp <laughs> rule one you must approach <laughs> yeah it is the rule one rule two no smoking <laughs> <laughs> on the weekends <laughs> unless it's outside <laughs> I know it's um it's definitely definitely conviction is that is the, the i think the first thing you want to work on yeah. and that does come probably primarily from the the approach and just doing it. yeah well if you're calibrated you learn to have conviction in what you're saying yeah. if you you take the courage to do these things yeah you're going to gain some yeah a conviction if you're confident in the way you're doing it again that leads to conviction so they all lead to conviction yeah. it is the king it's the yeah it's the golden nugget yeah definitely um so Courage, conviction, calibration. confidence, calibration, and congruency. congruency. Everyone, be congruent in what you're saying. Because then, if you, if you know, if someone catch you out and being congruent, yeah. that will break your conviction. Because you're yeah. like, oh, then, you know, oh, yeah, you know that feeling hit. you get you've when you yeah. made you've to look reacted. stupid. Yeah, you, yeah. You, lose, you lose that, your congruence when you react to something. Yeah, exactly. Um, you want to well, I mean, you can just not react to it and go, huh. Yeah. I've got something called the Richard Gear shift. It's like million dollar mannerisms that I've been copying from stars. Okay. And what the Richard Gear Shift before he starts making out or has sex with women or whatever, he does something called the Richard Gear Shift. And that's he just they they'll like insult him, they'll be like, Oh your shoes are crap, for example. And he'll just look down and chuckle to himself like, Huh and look back up. Yeah, I and remember just carry on talking. I again. remember I remember this from the from the videos we made a lot well, that that I helped you edit a long yeah. time ago. Um, I remember a lot of the, the material on that, so this this one's familiar. So I do that. The they try, you know, they, they try and shit test me or neg me or whatever, and I'll just go <laughs> like about a personal joke. Yeah, and it's sort of like yeah, you can get you can just be like oh, I've, and it's I've, cute as I've well. I train myself to react yeah. like that, yeah. and it's cute as well. Yeah, because they're like oh, he's giggling though. Yeah, and then just, yeah, and then just carry on with what you're saying. Don't just yeah. totally bypass it. It's sort of self-deprecating as well. Snip and stack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like a, it's like quite a self-deprecating humour because you're just saying, like, ah, I can take that. That's yeah. fine. But yeah. you're looking after them like more. Like, yeah. Yeah. You can do it again. Go on. I dare you. Like Scarface. Yeah. She's like, fuck off. He goes, now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing an outro. <laughs>
Because <laughs> we want to go out. True. Yeah, we're probably we're we're probably. And it is like twenty half eleven. What's the time? Half eleven. Half eleven. Yeah. At night. Okay. So we've covered a lot of a lot of stuff here. The roots of the roots of the game. The first steps in the game. Um, and really how to sort of um, increase your options and your opportunities. Um, is there anything more you'd like to add? Is there any other, other final pearls of wisdom for the audience of this podcast? Yes. Approach, get conviction, and just do it. It's as simple as that. Yeah. You just got to start. Well, thanks for coming over, Sam. Thank you very much, Rob. This has been an absolute pleasure to catch up with you as well. Um, we'll see you again soon. And we certainly will. Okay. Goodbye, audience. Bye-bye, audience.